a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, guys, an incredibly special one. I had the honor of speaking with Mr. Jordan Maxwell just a few short weeks before his passing. Now, full disclosure, this episode was supposed to come out a little bit ago, but we thought it would be best to wait. We, meaning uh, Brian, his caretaker, and I, uh, Brian has been instrumental in not only setting this up, but continuing Jordan's work. Down in the show notes is going to be Jordan's Research Society, but stay tuned and come back periodically. Just a couple of weeks here, uh, Order of the New Dawn should be up as well, and that's Brian and Jordan's huge compendium work that they're working on. So I'm going to include that at a later date. Just as soon as it goes live, I'll, I'll come back and add it to the show notes, uh, and that'll all be updated. So... Guys, we're going to do all the normal show notes stuff uh, and talk and stuff at the end of the episode as well at the end. Stay tuned if you'd like to uh, to hear our end of our conversation, the stuff that I usually cut out. Uh, We left that in for this just because it's such an awesome moment, and I want you guys to hear as much of him as possible. Uh, It was, like I said, just a, a goddamn honor. Uh, And we miss you, Jordan. And so you you do live on. You live on in all of us. Um, So let's get to this conversation, guys, with the legend, Jordan Maxwell. All right, ladies and gentlemen, an extremely special episode. We have Jordan Maxwell here to hang out with us. Uh, Mr. Maxwell, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Well, you look great. You've been uh, in and out of hospital, and they just can't keep you down. And we love that about you, of course. That's your spirit. And so we expect that from you anyway. Uh, so it's really good to see you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just wanted to let you know uh, we're all rooting for you out there. Everyone's kind of talking about how amazing you are uh, again. So it's like, you know, you're never at a step. And then all of a sudden you just reemerge by a pool on TikTok, which was pretty cool. Uh, I started following you immediately. I was like, oh, my God. And so I reached out and here we are, brother. So just wanted to thank you again for your time. Um, Also, I just wanted to ask you about this guy right here. So I've read this book. Cover to cover, I don't know how long. It came out in 2000. Uh, It is uh, probably my third copy of this thing. Um, I actually ended up getting another one and then going back through it. So um, what made you want to to write this little guy right here? I know you've written a few, but this one in particular. Corruption in government. The people in government are horrible. They are detestable. They are liars. They are cheats. They are, I, I don't have any words for them. They're t- totally terrible. And so I wanted to write a book about who's really behind government. And I know that the government makes a lot of money off of us, off of the world, welfare of the people. And we are worth a lot of money. I didn't know that. Now I know. We are worth a lot of money, millions of dollars, to the government. And they can, they can, they, uh, they take our money out before we see it. So the one thing that people do not know is how much money the government makes off of us, off of the normal person. It's in the millions. So a lot of people want to know how do they do it and how do we how do we find it? 
I put it on my research website, how the government operates behind the scenes. And therefore, it's all there. All you have to do is just look. It's there on the website. It's called the research website, Jordan Maxwell. And you'll find everything there. Ab- absolutely. And we're going to link all the ways to find you, of course, down in the show notes. We'll take care of all that good stuff. Um, I really wanted to ask you what your first thing, what your first clue that this place was not what you were being told was. A long time ago. I knew that people were corrupt. So you go from there to the people in power. Well, power corrupts, and an absolute power corrupts absolutely. I didn't say that. (laughs) And uh, unfortunately, most people do not realize to what extent we are being lied to. There was one man at NASA. He was a spokesman for NASA. And they asked him on the radio, they asked him, did you lie about landing on the moon? And he lied and said, we lie about everything. Everything. You never heard the truth from us. We're not going to tell you the truth. So that started me thinking I should write a book about that subject. How many people don't tell the truth? Most people, as I said, do not realize the full implications of how the world works. But we have governments, which are nothing but gangs. We have a gang of this and a gang of that. And there's a, usually gangs are pretty, pretty bad. And the gang that runs the government is even worse. Oh. I don't know what else to say. You're you're doing awesome, man. I was just thinking about uh, something, somebody that I had on the show formerly, a guy named Etienne de la Bortier Squared. He wrote a book called Government, The Biggest Scam in History. And I mean, he odes from your work as well. I mean, he has the same contention that governments are just organized crime rings. Organized oh, crime. Intergenerational crime, exactly. That's all they are, organized crime. So what do you so how is this so powerful for people? Why why does this work so effectively? Why do they get away with it? Well, everybody's doing it. Supposedly, everybody is supposed to be doing it. So therefore they get away with it. Yeah, it seems like everybody's in on it, right? Like Russia and China and uh, everyone, even with the Antarctic Treaty. And I want to ask you about Antarctica here in a minute. But uh, it seems like they're all in on this stuff. And you always see, and just like you point out in your book, it's, it's you know, um, you know, this person did some horrible things. Saddam Hussein's a great example that you use in there. This person did some horrible things. And then um, their next scene... Um, been given a ton of money and now we back their process and you even and to quote you in your book you said it's a business deal that's what those are it's all it is just a deal if you can come up with a better way to lie to people and scam them you'll be rewarded with money if not then you won't be it's very simple and especially with what's going on now, where you see these presidents that deny the certain narrative that was just an overwhelming, obvious Masonic ritual, I again want to ask you about in a minute, uh, just your thoughts on it. But then these people who do not, I believe there were four countries in particular, I think Haiti, a few others, I'm going to blank on it here because I'm in front of you, of course. But uh, there were a few presidents that didn't agree with this, and they all of a sudden were found mysteriously dead because they didn't play along. Right. And then replace the people Kennedy who did. Was one. 
What do you think Kennedy was going to talk about? Say it again. What do you think Kennedy was going to reveal? I think he was going to talk about the the, uh, the conspiracy against the American people. There's a major, major conspiracy among among the enemies of America to defraud the people and make sure they don't put their nose into your business. And that's what he was going to discuss. That's what he wanted to talk about. You know, and some people say that Marilyn Monroe played a part of that, and that's why she was, um, you know, offed as well. Uh, do you think that there's anything to that? Yeah, I do. I know Marilyn Monroe. And she was pretty screwy. <laughs> I can see that she would, she would, uh, she would not worry about who she was offending. And that is very dangerous in America. Yeah, if you can't be controlled, right? That's the uh, name of the game. So speaking... Speaking of control, uh, what role does the media play in all of this? All of it. It plays a big part of all of the matters of the crap that's coming down in America. The media plays a very big part. And they are lying through their teeth. Every time they open their mouth, right? Yeah. And it was... uh, Truman, President Truman said, the only thing you don't know is the history of this country that you don't know. That's what you don't know. And so therefore, the only real trouble we're in is all of the conspiracies that have been formed against us, American people. Think about why is a white man so criticized? Because he built America. He used the the, uh, backs of people and built our nation. And therefore, They hate him because he is wealthy. He is a corporate giant, and they can't stand him. They don't want nothing to do with any business that's successful. They want the people today want mediocre. They don't want anything that's going to be very good for America. They don't want nothing that's going to be good for America. You know, and it seems to be this massive psychological operation, which is ramped up. And I know you've seen this since, I mean, forever, right? And we talk about the media's involvement. You think of Project Mockingbird, right? Or Operation Mockingbird. Uh, the... The way that it is now, though, it's so isolating is what that they've convinced us all that's best for us is for us just to go in our homes, be on our phones, be in your Netflix, like, you know, put on your mask, put on your mask, comply by yourself and we hope you die. You know, and it's this idea, though, that seems so brilliant, like it's evil, like it's absolutely evil. But if you think about it, for it having gone on as long as it has to get to this point, it's just, you know, the Freemasons wet dream to experience something like what we're seeing around us right now. But what they didn't count on, or maybe what they did, depending on your spiritual beliefs, is, is that it would spark this, it would ignite this massive wave of awakening of people. On my website... Research Jordan Maxwell, you will see all kinds of pictures of lies in religion, all sorts of religious lies. And I have captured the pictures of the of the real 
life lies. And uh, so if you want to know what I'm talking about, then go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Research. It's only $30. It's a small amount, a one-time uh, subscription to a lifetime of information. So just go on the web, Jordan Maxwell Research, and you will see all of the pictures and the, the documents and the material that I have found over the years that have pictures about the stories in the Bible that are not true. A classic example is there was no ancient Israel. There was no ancient Israel. Most people think of Israel as a very ancient place. No, it wasn't ancient. Like I said, there's so many places where scripture has been lied about. They have led us to believe that certain things that are in the Bible are true when they're not true. And uh, so you have to go to the website and see the pictures and the documents and all the documents. And then there you will come to those well, one place that is going to show you all of the um, monetary lies that the government engages in and telling us all kinds of things which are not true. So most people don't know that a bank is a river bank. What do you get with a river bank? You get the uh, change in the flow of the of the uh, the flow, and so our money is considered currency, and therefore you get a different flow of the current the currency. And so when you see the current in the current of money, and it is being changed continually by a bank, a river bank. Also, this leads me to talk about, or want to ask you about rather, is uh, symbolism. So these secret societies like to hide symbols, and they're in plain sight. It, it's wild. So some of those examples, though, are like the all-seeing eye. So do you mind just telling us a breakdown on why that's the symbol and what the origins for that symbol are? The all-seeing eye represents the Jewish Messiah. The Jews talk about the Messiah, but the all-seeing eye is the Messiah. And they show... And you need to know how and why it is the Messiah. And uh, there's all sorts of symbols that are used. And the, the S and the line through it for the money is an insurance script. It's an insurance script. So... It's almost like the whole system is built right out in the open to where you could figure it out at any time if you want and not participate in it, and the whole thing would crash. But the reason it stays propped up is not only for lies, propaganda, all that good stuff, but it's because people simply don't ask. You know they what I mean? They don't ask. They're complicit. They don't know. Yeah, they don't know, so therefore they're complicit. And that's kind of what the symbols represent, right? They're to What do the symbols represent, actually? Well, symbols represent facts. Facts that we live by, but we don't know that. And so we 
pick up symbols here and there and everywhere, and they mean something. They are very important symbols. And I have heard that the Nazi party of Germany has moved out of Germany. It's no longer in Germany. It's down in uh, South America. And it's in, uh, what is that city? I mean, there's Argentina for sure. They're in Argentina. Yeah. And uh, probably a few others. Yeah. They're all over the world. And they are going to. And remember, they did not surrender to the American troops. The uh, the the uh, German army surrendered. The Second World War surrendered, but the Nazis never surrendered. Nothing. They don't surrender. They're not about to surrender. And so they have 130 trillion dollars to do what they want to do. And all of the German owned companies, German automakers, auto makers, television, radio, all the big German corporations, they send a certain amount of their of their income to uh, the German Nazi movement, and uh, so a lot of people don't know that 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 these big companies have got enormous amounts of money and they sell they they send that money to Argentina and in Argentina they got like a hundred and thirty million incredible amount of money they can do anything they want and they do whatever they please and the, and the problem is, there's nothing you're going to do to stop them. They have the money. Do you think that the Nazis started in World War II, or do you think that it was from something earlier that then morphed into that? I think of something earlier that finally ended up in World War One, And then World War II was just a continuation of World War One, And the big war that's coming is going to be nothing more than World War Three, a continuation of World War Two. Some would say also that, of course, it's funded by both sides. Wars are orchestrated. They're not real, but they're, they, the cost is very real. This is why when you talk about them this way, a lot of people can get offended, and I agree with that, uh, or I feel that that's their right, of course, but we're not meant to be offensive here. This is just the way this shit works. And if you want to be real honest about it, this should piss you off. This is this is the this is what Jordan's work did for me. It pissed me off to the point where I was like, okay. And then I could just see the lies everywhere. You are the glasses in that movie. Um Carpenter's movie. Damn it. It's so easy and I'm forgetting it right now because I'm in front of you, of course. Um, they live, thank God. Okay. They live, uh, where he puts the glasses on, uh, and he can see the truth around him. That's your information, man. That's what it was for me and continues to be. I'd still learn new stuff from you. I knew, saw new things going through this again. So with all the symbolism that's bombarding everyone all of the time, it seems that everyone's kept in kind of like a spell. There is a man from France, a Frenchman who has written a lot of books about UFOs. And he said that Pharaoh was walking along the Nile and he looked up and he saw a silver disc over his head. So obvious flag saucer. 
And it said that the people inside the silver disc were talking to him. And they would talk and he could hear them. He heard, he heard them very well. And they told him to go back to Cairo. He was the Pharaoh. They told him to go back to Cairo. He is going to found a new religion. And the new religion is going to be Aton, A-T-O-N. The Aton is a god of war and deception in Egypt. And he did. He went back and formed the form the foundation and a religious order called the Aton. And that's why the Jews today will tell you that you should not use the name of God because using the name of God, you're going to, you're going to use the name of God in vain. So you shouldn't do that. So they, they put a different word up. They, they, they said there's a different word you can use. It doesn't have God's name in it. It, it, it applies to God's name. And it's called the Tetragrammaton. The Tetragrammaton, Tetra is four. Tetragram. G-R-A-M-M -M is a letter, a gram is a letter, like A, B, C, D. That's why we got grammar. And so that's tetragram aton, tetragram aton. In other words, the aton is the most powerful God in the universe. And he is pictured in all the pictures above the Aton. He's always pictured as a sun rising above the mountains, a mountain range. And therefore, today we still worship God's Son, S U N. But remember, we speak today, we speak Anglo-Saxon. And therefore, Anglo is English, and Saxon is German. And German, that thing that comes up in the morning, that you can see the whole world, is a light to the world, is spelled S-U-N, the sun. But the Germans spell it S O N. Therefore, he is God's son, the light of the world. Well, of course, the sun is a light of the world. And uh, so then you have to go back to go back to the language itself, and you'll see that there's two different two different things being talked about here. S U N the sun and S O N the sun. But one is German and one is English. And that's why we have a misunderstanding of Jesus as a man on a cross. No, Jesus is the sun, S U N. And therefore, you can see him. Everything in those scriptures applies to the sun. It is always the same. And talk about uh, he is in the heavens. He's in heaven with God the Father. Well, the sun is in heaven. <laughs> and uh, oh, there's so many things that people do not realize about the sun. And so that's why today we are ignorant. We are foolish. We are 
backwards. We don't understand much of anything. We like to think we do, but we don't. So that's why I started the, the Research Society uh, to collect pictures and diagrams and documents that prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I know what I'm talking about. And so when you look at the world today and look at my book, you will see everything there. The, the Maritime Admiralty, which is a, a way of counting money based on the sun and the, and the rain and the water, because we are spending money like water. And it's hard to tell people that is very important. It's very important that they know how the world actually works. And that's what I wrote a book about, how the world really works. Yeah, uh, Secrets of the World Control, looking great. I uh, again linked it, all kinds of link down there. I uh, guys couldn't recommend it enough. You got to get it on your bookshelf. So I, I want to ask you, what what do you think the Nazis were doing down there in Antarctica, man? I think they were down there because they knew something else was down there. I think the thing they talk about, they got from the extraterrestrials that were here. And they were here, and they have their science of the extraterrestrials. And that's what we are today finally finding out, that they have always been connected. And here is a very important point. And they are so smart because they know where the answers are. And they know that the extraterrestrials have the answers. And so they are not talking to us. They're going straight to the source. And that's where uh, that's what is going on today. So you, it's still going on today? Yeah. With something in extraterrestrials and in Antarctica? It's going on today. It's still going on today. They're getting their information from an extraterrestrial source. And... But we don't know that. We, we, are, we are ignorant, ill-informed, and, and unread. We don't know that. So do you think that the extraterrestrials or non-human intelligences are, were helping the Nazis back then, or do you think that the Nazis stumbled across, uh, upon a technology and reverse-engineered it? And then the aliens may have came back and said, hey, that's our stuff, you know, because it sent off a beacon or something, and they're like, well, it's ours now. You're going to help us. Something like that must have happened. Something like that. I don't know. But I know that the Nazis borrowed heavily from the ETs, from the extraterrestrials. And I'll tell you another thing. You may not realize this, but the UFO is the extraterrestrial what we would call the devil and his demons. The demons are the bad angels. The bad angels made us. We are a product of the bad angels, and they have created us. And so when you, when you boil that down, you find out that they have, have uh, created us in their image and likeness. Isn't that great? We are like our image and likeness brothers. And we are in their image and likeness. Image means a, uh, the picture, the person is a part of 
an extraterrestrial family. And and they uh, like us means they act like us, which means they are always trying to see what they will find out about us. And that's why they keep coming back in their UFOs. They want to find out what we're doing, what are we doing, and what are we uh, applying ourselves to. And they, they are the demon, the demonic force that is coming back after they have made us. And they want to find out what we are doing. So do you think that there are any good alien species out there or that they're all this demonic alien? No, I think they're good angels and bad. That's why there's good angels and bad angels. And the angels are extraterrestrial. Well, of course, they're from out there. And so therefore, they are good and bad. And the bad ones are terrible bad. Very evil. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, and we just seem to be caught in the middle. You know, some people say that this is some sort of prison planet idea. Uh, I tend not to lean that way, but um, I'd like for that not to be the case. You know, that we're just some resource for some sort of extraterrestrial, um, I guess, demon in this case. It's pretty interesting. So, it where do you? There's a lot of different theories floating around right now about what UFOs are, and we explore a lot of those here on the show. So, I was just curious what you think they are. Where are they coming from? They're coming from heaven where we came from. Here is something that's important to remember that when God created Adam and Eve, he created two men, one with a, one with a penis, one with a penis and one with a womb. And one is called a womb man. They have a womb. They are a womb man. And a man with the penis is a man. And so they created two of us, male and female. And they set us on the earth. And remember, in the beginning, the Bible says in the beginning, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God made us. He made Adam and Eve. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say God made Adam and Eve. It says in the beginning, God made uh, A-G-M or A-D-M. Adam is the word that is used, A-D-L. Now, what you have to do is find out from the Jew what does A-D-L mean. Because whatever A-D-M is, that's what we are. What do you think it is? Huh? What do you think it is? I think it's a different kind of human. They created us. We are not fully human. We like to think we're human, but we're not. We're more like our, our creators. We're more like our creators. We look like humans. We act like humans. And we, we live like humans, but they are demons. And they're called Elohim. In the beginning, God created the Elohim. Elohim is a spirit creature. 
is what we call an angel. And so he created an Elohim and they created us. And it says in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God Elohim created Adam and Eve, not God, Elohim. Elohim created Adam and Eve. Well, that's why we are the way we are, because we were created by them. And we look like them, we act like them, and we live like them. And so, therefore, it can be said that the Elohim are spirit creatures that God created. And today, we are the offspring of the Elohim. We're the offspring of the gods. The gods are Elohim. L E L is a word for the is a word for God. But Elohim is a word that is developed to mean it's a spirit creature, but it is it was created. It was created. And so are we. We were created. Absolutely. So where, where do you find yourself spiritually these days? That's kind of hard for me to believe. It's kind of hard for me to put myself spiritually in a place that I don't belong. Mm. Interesting. I, mean, I think of myself as a creation of an Elohim, of one of the devils, one of the demons. Because God is portrayed as one of the gods. They created the Elohim and they created us. That's what the scripture says. It says the Elohim created us. And therefore, we look like them, we act like them, we talk like them, we live like them. And uh, so you might want to go to my website and see all the pictures, all the incredible pictures I have that have been, been found that most people don't even know exist. So if you want to know how you've been lied to, go to my website and look at the pictures. And the moment you see them, you know what they mean. And they don't mean what you thought they did. So that's, uh, that's the way it is. That is the way it is. And all of it linked in the show notes, guys. Make sure that you check this website out. It's super cool. So I wanted to ask you about uh, the Black Saturn deal. What's going on with that? Saturn is a square. Saturn has been made into a square, and it's black. That's why priests wear black robes. Judges wear black robes. Always a black robe represents Saturn. Saturn is the god of the black robe. And that's why today we worship in churches. A church is not what you think it is. And we've been lied to. We've been told that church means something else. It doesn't. It's a way of expressing where you have been. If you've been to church, it's a very, very old story. Most public pulp, most people do not know the whole story. I heard the story a long time ago, and it became very serious to me. If this is what we are, we have gone to church. 
church is a place where you go to be full, like you go to a gambling casino. They're going to fool you, and you're going to lose your money. Well, if you go to church, you're going to lose your money. You're going to lose everything because there is no truth in a church. Churches do not have truth. They have lies. They've been lying to us from the beginning. You know, uh, something that we point out a lot here, too, is that uh, it seems to be that a lot of the things going on in the mainstream anything, so, of course, media, government, politics, um, You've got everything that we're talking about here, uh, definitely the churches. Uh, it seems to be that whatever's out there in that capacity, for the most part, seems to be the inversion of reality. It seems to be where the delusion is processed and pumped out. Do you see I anything? Agree. So then the question I've got for you is, man, you freed yourself from it, and we talk about it on here as well. And I, I know a lot of people that are going through similar question asking exercises like we all are. What is your best advice to kind of navigate through all the nonsense out there and to really find what's what's really going on? And especially I would just suggest to be a book. It's called uh, Fire in the Minds of Men. Fire in the Minds of Men is a story of betrayal of the human rights by a group of people who are extraterrestrial and who are leading us down the road and telling us that here's what we have to do. And then you come to find out that they are demonic and they are liars. And I would suggest that you begin to go through my website and begin for the first time to see all of the lies and deception that I have found over the years and looking at looking at governments and uh, finances and banks. Like I said, a bank is a river bank. What does a river bank do? It directs the flow of a currency. You know, money is current. It's a currency, and therefore you want to, to you want to uh, create a current in the system, and it's a current of money, and therefore we are continually building a credit a credit system. Absolutely, a hundred percent. It's it's all nonsense. Um, and it just seems yeah. though that it's um see i take a pretty optimistic approach on it man to be honest with you i i know that's all going on and i see it for what it is i also kind of look at it from a spiritual lens that just alters my perception about the mechanism itself which is just that like it's it's all part of the same thing we're all part of the one unity consciousness and that's why i was asking I where you found yourself spiritually. And so all of the crappy things here, the reptilians, you know, all the stuff, even the demons and Elohim would be a part of some master entity, let's say, or consciousness for the sake. So where do you think that that consciousness fits in to you? What do you think, what relationship do you have to source, like ultimate source? I think it is a reptilian force. And I know that Prince Charles was on television once with a man that worked for CBS. And he asked Prince Charles a question, a personal question. And Prince Charles didn't like it. And he hissed at him like it was a, a snake. He hissed at this man. And it was really interesting in watching it. He hissed like a snake. Yeah, and you see people changing all the time. Have you seen all of those slips, especially on news reports and anchors and stuff like that? Yeah. I see a lot on all the news anchor programs. 
and you can tell when they're trying to bribe you into believing something. Yeah, for sure. And then when they get nervous or something, they'll glitch out and their face kind of morphs. What is what is happening there? What's what's going on? Why do they change? They have a method. The method is to explain to you in such a way that you do not know and you're not aware of how you're being lied to. But later on, you find out you were lied to and that you were lied to on so many levels and you've never known the truth. Hmm. Well, tell me about um, your favorite part of your life so far. So far... I don't have a favorite part. Just one big, huge, awesome part, huh? No. I have seen some beautiful women. (laughs) Nice. My man, hell yeah. (laughs) Heard that. You need to come to Texas. We've got quite a few packed up in here. I got about a bet. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, will you come on out? I'll take you out. It's on me. Okay. That'll be fun. So uh, tell me about the new world order, man. What the hell is the new world order, dude? It's an old world that we live in and it's being changed. People are being changed into a new world order. A new world order is a new government coming in to run everything. Instead of having 180 different governments that you have to contend with, when you want to do something, you got to talk to 180 different people who run governments and get them on your side. But if you only have one government, you don't have to talk to 180 people. You just talk and it will be able to listen. And so therefore, the 180 people don't matter. It's only one person. And I, I remember reading a long time ago that a Rothschild, one of the Rothschild people said, that all humans are alike. We're all alike. And if you know how to control one human, you know how to control them all. And that's what we are trying to do. We're trying to control the human race. And we're doing it in such a way as to bend their conscience to accept certain things is true. Because if we can get them to believe certain things are true, then that's it. Yeah, it's almost like an influence type of a thing. You know, um, the the idea that, you know, the vampire uh, model, okay, like, so they can't force you physically to do anything. You have to invite it in or you have to be lied to in a way that you don't figure it out. And so therefore you're complicit, which is why the, all the symbolism, right, is because oh. it, the idea goes that they're telling you everything that they're doing all the time. And we see this, you know, we have the eyes to see Always. it. Always. Always. So the people that don't see it are participating in this. And so then, therefore, they bring it about. They manifest their will onto this planet using us because we're the real special ones. They're not. That's how I see it. I think so. The ones that were chosen to be here, they were chosen to be in the heavens as spirit angels. But we are human on the earth, and they want to control us, the human population on the earth. And they are here to control us. And on my website, you will see all of the pictures 
of lies in the Bible. Things that we are told are in the Bible, which are not in the Bible. And so that's what we are, that's what we're doing here. We're building an empire for the earth. And it's gonna be a new order of the world. A new world order. And boy, think about the implications of that word. A new world order. Just in shivers down my spine. I think of that, you know, Klaus Schwab guy and uh, Big Phil. Uh, it's just gross, man. I just I don't care for it. Uh, but, but there are good things here. There's good powers fighting this too. Have you noticed all the people waking up right now? And I'm I'm sure you've noticed an uptick in sales because people have got to be flocking to your work because you're the go-to guy about you know getting your mind around this stuff. Um, so have you noticed this this big swing that's going on right now with consciousness as a whole? Yes. Well, unfortunately. Uh, I, I don't happen to be uh, among the people that are benefiting from this kind of reaction from waking up. People are waking up, but I, I say this is what you do when you're in prison. When you're in prison, every morning you wake up. And when you wake up, you're not going anywhere. You're still in jail. You're still in prison, so you're not going anywhere. So the people that are waking up are not about to go anywhere. They're not, they're not going to go anywhere, and they're not going to see anything different. They're just going to be told the same thing over and over and over again. And therefore, we are in a prison planet. Earth is a prison planet, and never has it been more obvious than now. The Earth is a prison planet. Somebody is in control of the Earth. We're not. We humans are not in control of anything. All you got to do is drive downtown, New York, and you'll see all the huge buildings, all the bank buildings, all the monetary big buildings, and just know that they run New York, and they run big cities, and they run the banking system. And we humans do not run anything. We like to think we do. We don't. It's the illusion of freedom, right? Yeah. We have the illusion of freedom. For sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's, what's the old quote? Uh, I forget who said it. Of course, it was I'm in front of you. Uh, but it's uh, that if voting mattered, they wouldn't let you do it. Um, so it, it's kind of like this joke, right? It's, it's like... Um, it's just a facade. It's all fake. You know, it's the wizard. It's um, a cardboard city that you see. It's real pretty in the front, but you walk to the side of it, and there's nothing there. It's it's all fake. Nothing there. Missing. Yeah. So let let me ask you this, and then I'll probably let you run for this time, but I, I can't wait to talk to you again. This has been amazing, man. Of course, you're just a treasure. So let me ask you, what gives you hope? What gets you out of bed every morning, man? What makes you excited? I have to tell you the truth. I don't have any hope. I have no hope for the future. I don't know what hope could be in. I don't see anything that has any light of hope. And therefore, you know, Christians have a have a distorted view of, of uh, faith. Faith is not what you think it is. Faith has become hope. Like you hope this will happen. You hope God will do this and that. You hope 
That's not faith. That's hope. When you understand what faith means, you understand when you get out of bed in the morning, you don't look at the floor. You look, you look around you, but you don't look at the floor. Why don't you look at the floor? Because it might have a hole in it and you might fall into the hole. It might have nails or glass or anything else on the floor and you're going to cut your feet all up because you didn't look at the floor. But when you get up in the morning, you jump up and you, you go do whatever you're going to do. That requires faith. Yes, you get up in the morning and you do whatever it is you're going to do. And just know that God will be there. He's always there. God is always there. He's always trying to help you. So you don't have to worry about whether something is good or bad. Just get up and do whatever you're going to do. And just assume it's going to be all right. And that's, why, that's having faith. That's what faith means. Get up in the morning. Don't look at the floor. Just get up and run and do whatever you're going to do. And whatever it is you do, either God will bless it, and it will be good, or it will be bad. It will be, be a big, 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 big mistake. But that is the most important thing, is you don't have to plan what you're going to do, just get up and do whatever it is you are going to do. And that is of having faith. Faith. Just to know that whatever it is you do, you were supposed to. So then that's, my final question for you here, brother. So what do you think the purpose of all of this is? I don't know what the purpose is. If you had to guess, what's your favorite idea? I know you've thought about it. I think God created two different kinds of people and wanted to see which one is going to be able to make something of themselves by what they do. And so the good angels have created the bad angels have created us. So the whole idea is to be able to find out what the bad angels know about life and us and then go back and look at what we know about life and us. And then you will find out how much lies we have been told. I adore you, sir. I'm grateful for your time. I can't thank you enough. This has been a damn honor, of course. And uh, I would love to have you on any damn time that you feel up to it, man. This is this is amazing. So it's been oh, a true I honor. It. Very nice of you. Well, you, of course. Yeah, this has been wonderful. And we, of course, have so much more to talk about. So we could just do this all day. But for now, uh, I'm going to let you run because I'm exhausted. You, you're wearing me out. My mind is blown with all the amazing stuff that you're talking about. I just can't believe I'm speaking to you. So I'm exhausted, but I'm grateful. So Jordan Maxwell, thank you so much for your time, brother. Let's definitely do this again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I appreciate the opportunity to be heard. And I want to thank you for that. Truly grateful for Mr. Maxwell's time. Uh, this was an absolute honor. It was so cool getting to sit there and and hear him explain things. And uh, just full disclosure here, guys, uh, whenever he would go into the things that I've heard him talk about for years, I, I got that same nostalgic feeling as if you're hearing a band and they're playing your favorite song. You know, when he would launch into 
some of the understandings that he had it just I got the chills and it was just really really cool this was just an awesome moment I really hope that you guys enjoyed this and and get to share in this excitement about uh, getting to speak with him and hear what he's been up to lately as well so all the ways of course guys to find him uh, his website absolutely will be linked down in the show notes to make sure that you guys check that out it's his entire life's work he's very very proud of it so at least go give it a, go give it a gander there. Also linked down in the show notes is going to be the way that you can expand your experience with us here on the show with expandingrealitypodcast.com. That has got the links to all socials, Rockfin, merchandise, uh, the replays of our live streams that we do over on Rockfin, as well as all of our too cool for YouTube or too hot for YouTube, whatever we're calling it. Uh, it's basically just this stuff because YouTube sucks and they just keep putting strikes on us. So all of the videos actually will eventually be over there uh, completely for free. I just want you guys to have access to this information. So uh, also down in the show notes is our affiliate links. So Food Forced Abundance, make sure you guys stop by and check that out. Libsyn, if you want to host your own podcast. And of course, Amazon, if you're going to buy anything, run it through that link. It helps the show. So go out into this beautiful, mysterious place, whatever this thing is, guys, and y'all pick up a piece of litter. Be nice to everybody that you come across by a meal or a coffee or something simple for somebody around you. Just connect with a stranger in that way and then burn out of their life. Never see them again. It's that kind of stuff right there, guys. It gives people faith in the universe. It just with a simple thing like that. You'd be amazed at how much of a ripple effect you can cause in this pond uh, by doing something as simple as that. And that's why I... A big proponent of that. Also, while you're out there doing all that stuff, get the hell out of the left-hand lane if you got somebody behind you wanting to pass. And uh, above all and anything else, guys, go out into this wonderfully beautiful place, whatever the hell it is, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Mr. Maxwell, thank you so much. This was awesome. Absolutely awesome. You were great. We are clear. So thank you. That was wonderful. That's quite all right. And thank you. Oh, you're, you're, the, you're the man. You know, you really are. And I just have to say, because I'm going to just say it off air here, that I look around and I see nothing but hope, sir. I, I really do. Uh, and I hope that maybe even just after this conversation, you could say you could see a little bit at least staring you back here. Uh, your work has been the framework for the understanding that I've gleaned and that really showed me what was going on here. And I'm eternally grateful. I use that as a stepping stone to not be lied to and to know what's not true to go away from it. But in the opposite direction of that, there's a lot of, a lot of beauty, man. And there's a lot of beautiful people here doing a lot of amazing things that really have a shot You're at right. making the next place a lot better. A lot of beautiful people are here doing some amazing things and that's what i would suggest if you if you take my advice go on my website and see all of the information diagrams pictures all of the charts to show you how much the government really knows about you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and definitely. And I'm going to link all of that stuff. So I got you covered on all of the promo stuff, man. I, I, I'm really good at this. I'm going to take great care of you. Don't worry about it. I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Ab- absolutely, man. Honestly, like I said, it's a, it's a damn honor, Jordan. I mean, really. Uh, and there's just so many things I didn't get to, but we, you know, I just wanted to have this with you and then like, let's leave it open. Let's definitely do this again. If you would like, man. Sure. I'd love to. Do you enjoy yourself? Did I do okay? I know you've done thousands of these. So what do you think? Be honest, be brutally honest. Where can I improve? Yes. And I appreciate you and what you're doing too. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, you built, you know, you're, you're part of, you know, the thread in the cloths that I wear, you know, you're, you're you're stitched in here, man. You're you're the you're the foundation for it. So thank you. That was so nice of you to say that, and thank you. Absolutely. So um, all right. Well, we uh, you know, I'm sure you got a hot date tonight. So I'll let you get back to that. You got some honey swinging by, or what? What do you got going? Oh, dinner only. Okay. Well, what's only for dinner? dinner? What sounds good? Hamburgers. Really? Are you a grill guy? Yeah. Yeah, do you do the grilling? 
Yeah. All right. All right. What's uh what's your go to um patty? Do you make it or do you do it pre made? Like the pre made ones? Oh, you do both? We make it. And uh we uh we go to uh what's the name what is the name of that? Earth we get our hamburger pays from the what is the name of that uh, company we get the hamburgers from oh well those were I mean normally I make them I go to like the butcher and get them all you know nice. I yeah, ask we- what, what type of cut you know we want and put it all together yeah, you got to go a good sirloin. Get him to put some bacon bits in that in that patty, and then grill it mm-hmm. up that way. It's insanely yeah. good. Yeah, that too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, yeah ch- ch- uh, rib chuck, and yeah, it was sirloin and one other meat. Or it the, might be a brisket. I yes. think I have that all grinded up. Yeah, I was gonna say brisket burgers, man. That's where it's at. You know, we live in uh, Texas. They're so, so freaking good, man. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Well, uh, like I said, gentlemen, I, I can't thank you enough, both of you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is amazing. I, I may see if I can coax you into sending me a signed copy of a book that I'll pay for, of course, but just I may see if I can bribe one of those out of you. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send, send uh, um, an address and we'll, we'll send you one. I'll text you it right now. And then, um, I mean, open invite, like I said, just please, uh, any damn time that you feel frisky or chatty, uh, let me know because this was awesome. It just really was. But I awesome. love that idea. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, this is Jordan's first show in a while, so it was, it was good. It was, it was nice to see him see him going again. He's feeling like himself. So oh, he was he got ramped up. I had to shut it down. I was like, All man, right. you know, I'm worn out. <laughs> you know, he wore me out. <laughs> That's amazing. No, but this a uh, true honor and a blessing, and uh, let's definitely keep in touch. I'll send you the address now, and then um, just thanks again, gentlemen, both of you. Just made my night. Thank you so much. Just stay in touch, okay? Don't be a stranger. Yeah, yeah Thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. okay. See you Bye-bye. Guys. Later. Later. <laughs>